All right, Alexander, let's talk some more about the Senate and what they're doing with uh, with regards to the fiascos of Russiagate and Ukraine Gate. We did a video the other day with uh, the Senate finally, finally moving to subpoena some of the ringleaders involved in the Russiagate hoax. And now it looks like the Senate is ready to drop a report on Biden and Ukraine accusations within the next few days. And uh, let me read you something from Zero Hedge, which they're pulling from the Hill, actually. And it says this, it says Senate Republicans are set to release their long-awaited report on Joe and Hunter Biden's activities in Ukraine and is expected to conclude that Hunter Biden's lucrative seat, the board of Ukrainian energy giant Burisma, impacted Obama-era Ukraine policy which was led by Joe Biden at the time. And uh, Zero Hedge is pulling this from the Hill. So the Senate is uh, is getting very, very busy about a month and a half away from the elections. I would say better late than never. But in this case, I think the Senate is uh, is doing this so they can try and get reelected come, uh, come November. A lot of the people are in trouble in the Senate. And I think a lot of Americans know that they were... Uh, I don't know if I can say this word. I'll just say it on YouTube. I don't know. We might we might get demonetized. I think they were dicking around, <laughs> and a lot of Americans know they were they were screwing around, and they're going to probably pay a heavy price for it. So I think they're trying to redeem themselves. Anyway, um, I'll take it one step further and say it wasn't Biden. Biden's activity. I'll say Joe Joe Hunter Biden. I'll say Joe Biden was the de facto president of. Ukraine. We've said it a million times, Alexander. Joe Biden was the de facto president of Ukraine during the Obama era, Alexander. Yes, I mean, you, you're, by the way, I, I think that was an entirely appropriate word in the sense that it describes what the Senate has been doing exactly. Now, let's just take a step back and, and you know, think about this very carefully. As you correctly said, uh, Joe Biden was the de facto president of Ukraine. He was the person who was um, the, the Obama administration's point man. He was giving all the instructions. He was chairing cabinet meetings. He was doing, uh, uh, com you know, commanding armies, practically. I mean, he basically was. He was the person who was the real person in charge in Ukraine. And his son happens to be on the board of directors of a major Ukrainian energy company. These two events are not connected. <laughs> I mean, it's only now dawned on the Senate, on people in the Senate, that there might actually be some connection between the two. Well, I would never use the word you have because my vocabulary is a very limited one. But... Don't tell me, don't tell me that it's taken all these clever people in the Senate all this time to work that out. I mean, that's just silly. <laughs> there's there's new leaked audio, Alexander. I don't know if you've heard some of the audio. It's not, I don't think it's that explosive. But once again, it's just more leaked audio via Petro Poroshenko speaking to Joe, to sleepy, creepy Joe. And once again, it just shows how Poroshenko was just getting orders from Joe Biden on all types of policy issues. I mean, it's really quite pathetic to see what Obama, what the Obama era did to Ukraine. It turned Ukraine into a, a U.S. statelet in a way. And, and Joe Biden was, was just sitting there literally just telling Poroshenko, do this, do that. Uh, you know, take this for a vote, take that for a vote, uh, go to the people with this, go to the people with that. I mean, it's it's really quite bizarre. Oh, it's awful. I mean, can I just say something? I mean, what Ukraine was, was basically conquered country, a uh, conquered territory. As far as people like Biden and other people in the Obama administration felt, I mean, they went there, they ran the place, they were going to make lots of money there. Um, not just Hunter Biden. We've discussed all the various people, you know, Devin Archer, all, all, all that crowd. They were all going off to Ukraine, making lots and lots of money there. Uh, um, money was being poured into Ukraine by the IMF, by the US taxpayer, by the various European countries through all their various agencies. Going straight out again 
into various accounts. It was enabling people like Paul Manafort. This was even before the coup. Paul Manafort, you know, he was buying his ostrich leather jackets with the money that was going into Ukraine. And of course, that what Manafort was doing just exploded after the coup happened and after a pro-American, pro-Western, pro-German, Germans have been heavily involved in this, probably to an even greater extent than the US has been. I mean, because we know a bit about the US side of the story because the US is a more open society than Germany is. But I'm sure that all the things that the Americans were doing, the Germans have done to a much greater extent. Let me say that clearly. And Poroshenko he had a very close relationship with Biden. He had a very close relationship with Merkel also, which, you know, we we, we should not overlook this. But we're talking about Biden at, in this video. So all of this is going, all of this was going on. Biden, as I said, was the effective president of the country. And of course, he was presiding over this ghastly mess that was happening there. His son had this job uh, uh, on the board of one of the top uh, um, energy companies, one of the most corrupt energy country, companies in the country. And of course, there's a connection. There has to be. I mean, the conflict of interest is glaring and it is out in the open. And one of the things that I'm really concerned about is that the Hill, which is the source of this story, says, yes, you know, there's going to be some admission that Hunter Biden being on the board of directors of Burisma had some effect, you know, damaging effect on US foreign policy to Ukraine. But apparently they're going to clear Biden of engineering the dismissal of the US, uh, of the Ukrainian prosecutor who was investigating Burisma. And they're going to say, well, you know, they can't find any evidence that anything inappropriate happened, which is just Silly. I mean, it's just aside nonsense. From <laughs> aside from the video, aside from him openly bragging about it, aside from this vast piles of papers and documents and things, because yes, we can make admissions that you know this wasn't perhaps quite as it should have been, but oh no, you know, Sleepy Joe doing anything really wrong. I mean, to perish the thought could never have happened. I mean, then that's and that I'm afraid tells you again. All you need to know about the people in the Senate who are producing these reports. As you said, some of them are in political trouble because the November election is coming up. Trump's base feels that they've let the president down, which they have. And at the same time, so they don't really want to open up all of these things because I suspect many of them have ideological and political hostility to Donald Trump, I'm talking about Republicans now. So others of them are themselves committed to Ukraine for all sorts of reasons, perhaps even financial reasons. And so they come up with this, what looks like is gonna be a mealy mouth report saying, well, you know, it wasn't entirely as it should have been, but it wasn't, you know, that bad. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, Joe Biden shouldn't have done what he did. He shouldn't have let his son be a, di a director of a Ukrainian energy company. But, you know, uh, n nothing really criminal or bad ever happened. And I'm afraid that's the story of the Republicans in the Senate. I mean, I, I was reading on Byron York, just, just this is a, connected to this, that apparently when Vindman, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, remember him, the, the star witness in the impeachment proceedings, the person who almost certainly orchestrated the whole of Ukraine gate, the person who went to uh, uh, almost certainly provided all the information to this mysterious whistleblower that, you know, Adam Schiff, conjured up as basically a cover to conceal Vindman. Well, it turns out, and this is what Byron York says, that the Republicans were not prepared to cross-examine Vindman closely enough in the various congressional meetings because they respected him as a serving officer. In other words, they pulled their punches with him. Uh, even though the fate of the country and the presidency was at stake. I mean, I find that absolutely unbelievable myself. I mean, here was a man, as I said, who plots against the president, 
orchestrates an impeachment and he comes along and you don't go for him. I mean, extraordinary. But Byron York confirms it. And Byron York talks to congressional Republicans, to people in the Senate and in the House. And he's an extremely well-informed journalist and a very reliable one. And I've no doubt that what he says is true. So we're getting all of this theatre of criticism, but no real punch. There's no real punch behind it. It doesn't really tell us clearly and straightforwardly. It doesn't tell the American people clearly and straightforwardly what really happened. Yeah, this is why people are fed up with the Republicans in the Senate, because they're they're just this whole thing is is just so God, it's so frustrating. Because if there was a time that they were going to drop the the Hunter Biden stuff, and they could have dropped a big hammer for on Hunter Biden and on Joe Biden, they would have done it during the whole Ukraine gate fiasco, during that whole farce. And they could have dropped some heavy hammers. I mean you know, we're two guys, one guy sitting in London, one guy sitting in Greece or Cyprus, and we were dropping all kinds of truth bombs as to what was going on in Ukraine. Burisma, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, Tony Podesta, John Podesta, Manafort, IMF uh, loans, EU loans, US money laundering, all that stuff. We were dropping all kinds of truth bombs. Our viewers were dropping all kinds of truth bombs as to what was going on in Ukraine. And during that whole process, Alexander, the Republicans didn't do dick. They didn't do anything to to even question Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. They were mouth shut. So my question is, this report that they're dropping is not going to be an October surprise, correct? It's not going to be an October surprise. It's all designed to maybe get some brownie points from Trump so that Trump can go campaign for them a little. Maybe Trump can send a couple of tweets about it. And, you know, the, the Senate Republicans that are that are having trouble in their seats, you know, may get a, a, a Trump endorsement. It may help that help give them a bounce mm. as they're looking for re-election. And it's something that they can go to their state and they can say, you know, look, when it came to corruption in government and Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, look what we did. We issued this report and here we exactly. are fighting corruption and blah, blah, blah. That's what that's why they're dropping this. That's that's exactly right. You've got you've got it. You've got it wrong on every point. I mean, you know, we we, as you absolutely rightly say, based on nothing but what was being reported publicly. But, you know, keeping in a, keeping our eyes out open and you know, spending hours reading all the various commentaries and all the various papers. We figured it out last year. <laughs> we had it clearly worked out last year. If you go back to uh, the programs we were doing a year ago in the run up to the impeachment and during the impeachment, we had it all there. And the Republicans are only now, was it 45 days from the election? coming out with a, well, not, it hasn't even come out yet, with this kind of report. It's not going to be any kind of October surprise. It is exactly what you said. It's intended to get a few, you know, nice brownie points in the Republican base, uh, um, you know, give Donald Trump, well, you know, the impression, well, actually, we did fight for you. We're on your side. And at the same, at the end of the day, brush the whole story under the carpet. I mean, I'm hoping that when Trump is reelected, as I predict he will be, he will push all this aside and really press on and get to the bottom of this. He doesn't owe it just to himself. He owes it to the United States. The people of the United States need to know what was going on in Ukraine, just as they need to know what was going on during Russiagate. They need to know the whole truth. They need to know what was being done with their tax dollars, what their representatives in Congress were doing and failing to do. And I think that is why he was elected in the first place, to expose these things, to drain the swamp. The swamp, it's quite clear, is never going to drain itself. Okay, we'll leave it there and we'll wait for this report and see what it has to say. Alexander Mercurius, thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click on the red subscribe button down below. Like, share, and also send us your comment. What do you think about this video? What do you think about this report that is coming out? And please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, 
and subscribe star. Your donation really helps out this channel. It helps us grow and it helps us report news to you, direct to you, and also go to the Duran shop, pick up some merchandise. And also, Alexander, do you have a patriotic legacy Patriot Beacon with you? Of course I do, Alex. All How right. could I not? It's always there beside me, um, especially today. My wife is away. So, you know, I'm going to be going out walking my dogs in the night and I absolutely have to have my Patriot Beacon there. My Patriot Beacon 3, I should add, made by our friends at the Patriotic Legacy. This one is matte black, as you can see, but they come in many colours and there's a pink one, I understand, circuit circulating around. When I walk my dogs... Um, in the woods near my house, I have to have it because it's my way of keeping track on what they do. And what is a Patriot Beacon 3? It is the best flashlight in the world. It has this extraordinary beam. You can see it now. You can dim it if you need to. And you can actually have it flashing if you also need that. If you're walking in a dark, you know, on a, along a dark road and you want to alert drivers to the fact that you're there. And um, it's when I say it's got a tremendous light, it's the best flashlight. I mean, the distances it covers are just phenomenal. And the, the clarity of the light, and it's, uh, it is, is, you can pick up the most extraordinary detail. I should say, by the way, I don't have particularly good night vision. Um, I've got all kinds of issues with my eyes. And I, I, I would be lost without it. it, is, it but it provides that degree of clarity that I have complete confidence going out in the dark with my dogs um, when I have it with me. And of course, if I need to call my dogs, if they're scampering around, there's an alarm I can press. You can see it there in the handle. I can press it like that. You can hear the alarm going. And I don't need to worry about it ever running out of power because it's in fact solar powered. So all I need to do is to keep it in the light during the day, as I do, and it's immediately available for me in the dark. And of course, it's also got port, a port. So if I need to recharge my smartphone when I'm out, I can do that without any difficulty if that runs out. So you've got you've got all you've got all these incredibly useful accessories. Now it's also a great flashlight to have with you when you're driving. And if you see an accident and you need to get someone out of their car, well, it can be used to break a windscreen. You can see it. It's got this sort of windscreen breaker, but it can also be used, by the way, as a hammer. And on the other side, you can see that it's got a uh, seat belt cutter. And I have a in my in my car, I have a little uh, um, metal thing which I put up so that I can just you've got a magnet. You can just put it to your side uh, there at the side of the car, easy to reach when you need it. And it's incredibly useful and immediately available to hand. But I said that this uh, Patriot Beacon 3 gives you confidence when you're walking with it because it's such a great flashlight. The other thing that gives you confidence about it is that it is so well made. It is incredibly strong, incredibly rugged. It oozes quality. It gives you that immense sense of security when you're holding it in your hands because you have this wonderful product in your hands. And it's the kind of product in which the U.S. excels. It's made in the United States by our friends at the Patriotic Legacy, but it ships around the world. It is the Patriot Beacon 3. Alex, at the end of this program, will tell you about a competition that is now uh, uh, going to um, actually provide these. It comes in pink. It supports uh, uh, um, a, um, a cancer um, campaign, which Alex will tell you more about. And with every Patriot Beacon 3, you get um, also, if you enter that competition you and you, know, you win, you get also a mug with the flag of the United States, the great nation where it is made. And a great nation, by the way, which we are uh, we feel both of us great affection for. And this is one of our Duran mugs, the best mugs in the world. They come with many flags. Here is another flag, the flag of Australia. And we've also now got shirts with many flags. And you will notice that this one also 
has the flag of Australia. I am, uh, like many British people, I always have great fondness and affection for Australia, a country which we will be trying to cover more in our programs. So you can come to the Duran shop too. You can buy our mugs with all their flags. You can buy our shirts. You can also buy our hoodies, which are coming in immense and wonderful ranges. We've got amazing hats too, uh, um, with uh, all kinds of flags and embroideries. And you will also find, of course, our great gallery of ebooks. So come to our shop, support the Duran, join the competition, get a Patriot Beacon 3. Alex will tell you all about how to do that. All right. You can use the code Duran20 when you go to the Patriotic Legacy website. You'll find the link underneath this video in the description box down below. Use the code Duran20. Get a 20% discount when you make a purchase from the Patriotic Legacy. You'll automatically be entered into the contest to win a pink Patriot Beacon 3. That is a pink color. You will be seeing a photo right now. And with that Patriot Beacon 3, you will also get a Duran USA Magic Mug as well they ship international so the patriot beacon three pink that is the giveaway it ships internationally it's for a good cause it is for breast cancer awareness month so you will find the link in the description box down below and the duran shop you'll find the link in the description box down below alexander mercurius thank you very much until next time everybody take care